Um, so this is, th these are just a couple cases that um, just to illustrate kind of when we, when we do what. Um, so this was a 34 year old male who presented with right-sided weakness. His fMRI uh, did demonstrate uh, that he had, um, uh, sorry, this is actually, he had left-sided dominance. And um, so he, um, because he was left dominant and the tumors on the left, we actually did a transylvian resection, um, which means that we used actually the sylvian fissure. So this, this is the sylvian fissure. Uh, we actually split open that fissure, made it wide, and then access the tumor through the fissure without actually removing, going through any of the normal brain. Because you can imagine, this is a very short path right here to get to the tumor, very short path to get to the tumor. But the problem is that this is, this is really where we're talking about eloquent speech function. Um, and so when you, if you try to access the tumor that way, uh, you're, you're really going to hurt the patient. So you can't, you have to access that through other corridors. Um, th there are other ways to do it by, by finding the tiny little window in the normal brain that you can get used to get to the tumor. And that's another way to remove these tumors. Um, but generally in awake, um, you know, it's helpful to do it. Um, if it's, if it's dominant to do it awake and actually, so this was an example of this patient was right-handed with right hemisphere dominance, which was really unusual. So because of that, we did it asleep, but otherwise that's, that's how we would do that surgery. Um, this is a 20 year old male who presented with seizures and word finding difficulty. We planned this with the preoperative fMRI as well as DTIs. And we uh, did an awake frontal parietal craniotomy. We did intraoperative speech mapping and subcortical stimulation. Uh, to remove the tumor, kind of similar to the other one. Um, one of the problems we run into is that sometimes these tumors, these gliomas, especially these glioblastomas and gliomas, they look almost the same as normal brain. And so one of the tools that we can use is um, this 5-ALA, which is a fluorescent guided surgery. So we actually just give patients a pill, an oral solution um, and the tumor actually takes up this 5-ALA um, this, which is a protoporphyrin and converts it uh, to this visual, visible spectrum. So it converts it to this very bright, avid pink uh, fluorescence. So this allows us to, if you, just to show you an example, under in surgery under blue light, we see the tumor here that we're removing is lighting up this really bright pink. So it helps us to say, okay, well, this is normal brain and this is tumor, helps us to remove, remove that tumor. Um, and you can see like under the normal white light, it's almost impossible to extinguish, distinguish, especially as you get to closer to the margins. These tumors are very infiltrative. They look very similar to brain. And so it's easy to leave tumor behind, you know, worrying that you don't want to resect normal brain. But when you have something like this, that says, you know, we know there are tumor cells in there, as long as it's a safe area, we uh, go ahead and remove it. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.